Miss Carol. Exercising resources for David McLeod. It's the coolest job. my mum if I can get out my clarinet lesson if I'm going to go on that trip. Excuse me. At least you have the money to go. I thought your parents were going to pay for it. So did I, till my dad decided to teach me the value of a dollar. Okay, the trip costs $75. How much do you still need? Seventy... Four. Oh. Back early. I suppose you want your paycheck. It's Prancer. What happened? We were galloping in the South Meadow, and she pulled up lame. Uh-huh. Stand. <laughs> uh, useless animal. Strain tendon. Third time this month. Ah, uh, put her in the stalls. Should I call the vet? What for? Spend a fortune on an uninsured horse? Got a lot to learn about the racing business, Carol. But she's in pain. She'll be put out of her misery. First thing tomorrow morning. She's supposed to groom Cobalt. Ever heard of grooming your own horse? Can I help it if she likes working for me? Carol doesn't work for you. She only does it because she loves Cobalt. I'll look after Cobalt for you. What? Of course it'll cost you. How much? Ten bucks a job. Five. Deal. I have to talk to you guys. Emergency saddle club meeting. What's wrong? Someone forgot the password. No, they have to work on their secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stevie. Spotless. And when you're done, clean my saddle. Sir? Yes, sir. But Prince is so sweet. You should have seen her when I put her back in her stall. It was like she knew something bad was going to happen. Well, I'm sorry, Carol, but it's the reality of the business. Not everyone's in it for the love of horses. He's going to turn her into dog food. She belongs to David McLeod. There's nothing I can do. You said Pepper's getting too old, so you need another school horse, right? Prancer would be perfect. I need a school horse, guys. Not a highly strung ex-race horse with a bad leg. What if we leased her? We could all pitch in and take care of her. Yeah, then you could see what a great school horse she would be. I don't have the room. We could do extra work around the barn, you know, to pay for her board. She'd be our responsibility. And what? You'd quit school and work here full time? <sighs> That's not an option, guys. I'm sorry. The answer's no. Why are you cleaning Veronica's saddle? It's a long story, Mrs. Rag. I hope it has a happy ending. 
This isn't the onset of teenage angst, is it? It's Prancer. You did everything you could, Carol, and you can bet that Prancer knows that. Thanks. Can you ask your dad to buy her? She already has Starlight. He said we can't afford to board another horse. I even offered to use my trip money. What? You can't. You have to come on the mountain trail overnight. Stevie, Prance is worth more than any trail ride. You're right. I'm sorry. He said no anyway. We can't let Mr. McLeod destroy her. You heard Max. It's Mr. McLeod's horse. What are we gonna do? Kidnap her? Yes. Yes what? No, Stevie, we can't. Tell me. Where would we hide her? What are you talking about? The old Gregory barn. On the other side of Pine Hollow. Can you please tell what me? What about her leg? We'll keep her there till it's better. And then we show Max what a great horse she is. Then he won't be able to say no. We have to do it tonight. What are we doing? We're kidnapping Prancer. Bean, Kerbald stall is a mess. Veronica, I don't have time. <sighs> she believes the greedy make the needy feel the way they do. And everyone can make a difference, even me and you. He believes the destiny is following your dreams. He says you gotta say the things you feel and always feel. The things you need, and they buy each other coffees in a Bronte cafe, and they talk about the music they heard last night on Ray. Now, Veronica? Yeah. You must be exhausted. You've been here all day. I'm so tired. Mm, I guess so. Imagine how Stevie must feel. What do you mean? Well, I saw Stevie working for you today. I've never seen Cobalt store look so clean. Oh, that. Stevie needed the money and I wanted to help her out. You know, Veronica, it's, it's one thing to ride your horse. But the real bonding happens with the daily routine of looking after him. Now, just imagine how wonderful Cobalt would be if you got to know him just a bit better. Actually, Cobalt and I are doing fine, Mrs. Reg. And my parents pay a lot of money for me to ride here, so I don't think they want me to waste my time doing barn chores. But thanks anyway. Good night. It's late. Will you stop playing and go to bed? I can't go to my lesson on Saturday if I haven't practiced. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do. She's trying to get out of her clarinet lessons so she can go to the mountain trail overnight. Melanie, go to bed. How am I supposed to sleep with all this noise? That is enough, Melanie. Now off you go. And you, Lisa, will stop spending all your time at Pine Hollow and start practicing your clarinet during daylight hours. <laughs> Point. It sounds like you're killing a duck. Off to bed, both of you. Yes, Bubba. We're so late. Where's Stevie? I'm here. Queen Veronica wouldn't let me go.
What's wrong? Why can't she get up? Why didn't we leave her in the stall? She wanted to lie down. She's got colic. If we left her lying down, her guts would have knotted up and she could have died. We have to get her outside. What if Mr. McLeod sees us? We have to keep her walking. The old regnery barn is only a few minutes away. I'm calling the vet. You want to go to jail? We can't let anyone know we're here. If we keep her walking, she'll be OK. What about her leg? We don't have a choice. We have to keep her moving. She's burning up. That's weird. Colic doesn't usually come with a fever. Let's get this blanket off. Lisa's right. We have to call the vet. Carol, we can't. Mr. McCloud. I don't care about McCloud. We have to save her. I don't want you to get in trouble because of me. It was my stupid idea to kidnap her. Well, if you hadn't have thought of it, we wouldn't have made it to Prancer in time. This is a saddle club. We stick together, right? Thanks. I'll call Dr. Barker. Can't help thinking about Carol and her horse. It's not Carol's horse, Mum. It's David McLeod's. Carol's been... I've been raving about Prancer ever since she started working there. The question is... What are you going to do about it? Me? Nothing. You know McLeod. Unfortunately, yes. There are men like McLeod with his passion for the almighty dollar. And there are those of us who just love horses. I thought I knew which camp you were in. It's not my horse, Mum. I was there when we bought the school horses. Delilah, Hatch, Comanche, Bark. I've thought about that. Have you? Yes, we don't have the room. Why can't anyone understand that? Your decision, Max. When did the colic start? Tonight. She was fine this afternoon, and she's really hot, too. She's definitely running a fever. Any change in her routine lately? She's lame in her left front leg. I've seen that strained tendon twice this year. It's pretty quiet in there. That's a bad case of colic. What's that? Oh, it's an anti-inflammatory to treat the colic. It'll take the pain away. And I'm going to prescribe a broad-spectrum antibiotic for the fever. She'll need to have a shot every day for seven days. She'll be OK, though. The leg should heal all right. The fever concerns me. How much will this cost? Don't worry. I'll send the bill straight to McLeod. No. I mean, uh, uh, um, we'll take care of it. Aren't you Karen Hansen's daughter? Yeah. What are you doing out here? Uh, we came to visit Prancer. In the middle of the night? We do it all the time. Yeah, all the time at night. What's she doing in the old regnery barn? We walked her over here from Mr. McLeod's because of the colic. I don't know what you're up to, but you obviously love this horse. Let's call it 200 even. Can you please give us a moment? OK. I've only got 75 that I saved up for the mountain overnight. Where am I going to get the rest? Don't worry, I've got it covered. 
Will you take a deposit? We'll give you the rest of the money tomorrow. Sure. No, Stevie, you can't. That's your trip money. You were right, Carol. This horse is worth more than any trip. Thanks. Need anything else, Max? No, that's it for today, Red. Thanks. So, you're going to buy this new horse or what? What? McLeod's thoroughbred. Oh, not you too. You need another young school horse. Yeah, because Pepper's getting old and McLeod's a monster and, and Carol's attached to Prancer. And look at Bark. I already know the top ten reasons why I should buy this horse. And the answer's still no. You got it? Forget I said anything. Just another horse, right? That's right. No food? You can give her a little water if she'll take it. Keep her walking, but whatever you do, don't let her roll. She's gonna call Max for sure. We're so dead. What do you think you're doing? A uh, uh, prancer had colic, so we you had... You broke into my barn and stole my horse. I know. The vet called me. Well, Prancer's sick. She needs help. I'm calling the police. I'm going to have you charged with trespassing, horse theft, and cruelty to animals. We were only trying to save her. Funny. She was fine when I checked on her. You came busting into my yard and suddenly she's sick. All you care about is getting your money from the slaughterhouse. I'd watch that mouth of yours. <laughs> She'll try to be more polite, won't you, Stevie? You know these delinquents? I asked them to bring you my offer. What? I'm looking for a new horse. Carol told me about Prancer. She sounds perfect. <laughs> for horse meat, look at her. Behave it for a businessman, that's a disappointing sales pitch. I think my offer's more than fair. Oh, and, uh... Let me deal with the girls. Oh, no. They broke into my barn. And saved you from finding a dead horse this morning. Judy Barker called me. These girls got to Prancer just in time. Well, they just stand there staring at me. Let's get this horse home. Snapping. I cannot believe you guys. What were you thinking? If we waited till tomorrow, she'd be dead. We wanted to call you, but you said you didn't want her. You must think I'm a monster or something. You said, I don't need a high-strung ex racehorse with a bad leg. Okay, yes. But I didn't mean taking the burden of a sick horse entirely on your own shoulders. Well, we didn't know she was sick until we got there. When you stole her? Yeah. 
after sneaking out in the middle of the night? Uh-huh. Without telling your parents? Pretty much. She's obviously a special horse. What you did demonstrated real dedication and loyalty. You reminded me why I stay in this business. You know, when I first met Bark, his owner was going to put him down. My mum bought him for me. And Bark's turned out to be one of the best school horses Pine Hollow's ever had. And so will Prancer. I'm counting on it. But it means a lot of hard work and extra time at the stables. Whatever we have to do, it's worth it. Now, go home. I called your parents to let them know you were safe. And call me overprotective? But I don't think you should make a habit of sneaking out to steal horses in the middle of the night, okay? Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Can you believe it? My mother is out shopping for camping gear. She says she never wants to hear O to Joy again. Guess playing the same three bars over and over again will do that. Stevie, what are you doing? You have to wrap Cobalt's legs. No. You know what? I know. Guess you're not going on the trip then. Actually, I am. Seems spending all my cash to save a horse means I do know the value of a dollar. My parents coughed up the money. <sighs> <laughs> I'm so happy you get to go. You have to take lots of pictures for me, okay? I don't want to go if you can't. The trip won't be any fun if we don't all go together. She's beautiful, girls. Well done. And you've got to take care of Cobalt, because you know Veronica won't. You can keep an eye on Cobalt yourself, Carol. But I gave all my money to the vet. I know. We can't separate the Saddle Club now, can we? Judy told me that you girls paid for Prance's vet bill. Doesn't seem right that you should be uh, paying for a horse that belongs to me and Max. Prance is our responsibility now. So, I expect to see you all on the mountain trail overnight next Saturday. Thank you, Mrs. Rake. <laughs> now, does this make me an honorary <laughs> member of the Saddle Club? Does it? <laughs>